This guide covers all the actions the white mage learns from level 51 to 90, in order. We go over how each action is meant to be used and recommend ways to use it when relevant. In the final summary, we outline an optimized opener and explain how it leads into the general rotation, alongside 2 minute burst considerations. We also touch on the stat priorities of the white mage. Finally, we will also go over healing strategies and advice. I will assume you already know the basics of white mage from level 1 to 50, and if not, you can view my white mage starter guide to get caught up. I will also assume you are acquainted with common abbreviations like GCD, OGCD and Weaving, and if these abbreviations are unfamiliar to you, I have a short describing GCDs and OGCDs, and a short describing Weaving. Now then, at level 52, you gain access to the Healing Gauge, perhaps more commonly known as the Lily Gauge. While in combat, you produce one Lily every 20 seconds, up to a maximum of 3. You also learn the spell Aflatus Solus, which spends a Lily on use. Aflatus Solus is effectively a free and instant version of Cure 2. Because Aflatus Solus is a spell and not an ability, it should be used in place of Cure 2, or if you have nothing else you can cast while running. And you have a target that could benefit from the healing. This does indeed mean that you could end up with 3 lilies and nothing to spend it on. At this level, this is fine. You also learn the ability Asylum, which places a large dome that heals everyone in it for a long time. If you know your group isn't going to leave the area for a while, this is by far your best healing option, so use it whenever this is possible. To more easily place Asylum, go to Character Configuration and under the Target section, toggle Limit Ring Movement to Targeting Range, and press Action twice to execute. This way, you can always place Asylum immediately within a feasible location by pressing its keybind twice. At level 54, Stone 2 is permanently upgraded to Stone 3, increasing its potency slightly. This changes nothing for your rotation. At level 56, you learn the ability Assize, which does a large amount of damage in a large area around you. It also heals all allies for the same potency. It also restores some MP. It also does your homework and waters your garden and walks your dog for you. Nah, I'm just kidding. But joking aside, this ability does so many good things that even if you only benefit from just one of them, like the damage, it is a good idea to use it on cooldown, weaving it between your spell casts. At level 58, you learn the ability Thin Air, which makes your next spell cast free. With two charges and a one minute charge time, this allows you some freedom in which spell to use it on. A particularly powerful spell to combine it with is Raise, but if you know for certain you won't need a charge, you can always toss it by spending it on stone. You still save some MP this way, which is better than sitting on two charges all the time. At level 60, you learn the ability Tetragrammaton, which simply heals your target as an OGZD on a minute cooldown. This should be considered one of your first options when the tank, or someone else, needs some healing, before you start casting spells for it. Remember to not save Tetragrammaton for a rainy day, as its usefulness comes from its short cooldown alongside its power. At level 64, Stone 3 is permanently upgraded to Stone 4, which, again, increases its potency slightly. Aero 2 now needs to last at least 12 seconds to beat it, rather than just 9. At level 66, you learn the ability Divine Benison, which applies a large shield to your target on a short cooldown. As long as the tank is actively taking damage, it is beneficial to use this on cooldown on them between your spell casts. It is also a great option to use just at the start of a fight, or while the tank is pulling. At level 70, you learn the ability Plenary Indulgence, which applies a buff on everyone in range that on its own does nothing. Whenever anyone in range is healed by any of your AoE healing spells, it heals them some more. Since the cooldown is surprisingly short, I recommend weaving this just before any AoE healing spell you intend to use, even if it is just Medica 2 and nothing more. The only exception being if you know you will need the extra healing from Plenary Indulgence very shortly. At level 72, Stone 4 and Aero 2 are permanently upgraded to Glare and Dia, both dealing more damage. Glare is now better than Holy on 2 targets, and Dia is better than Holy on up to 4 targets, and beats Glare if it lasts at least 12 seconds. Remember to apply Dia to enemies as the tank is pulling. At level 74, your healing gauge is expanded with the Blood Lily. Whenever you spend a Lily, you feed the Blood Lily, and when it has been fed 3 times, it blooms. You also learn the spell Aflatus Misery, which does a gigantic amount of damage with a significant AoE component at the cost of spending the Blood Lily. It is also an instant spell, so it can be used while on the move. As Aflatus Misery requires you to spend 3 lilies to access, it can, from an attacking perspective, be viewed as an attack that costs 4 GCDs to use. 
Conveniently, it deals slightly more damage than 4 glares, meaning that it would technically be a DPS gain to toss 3 lilies out for no reason and then cast a Flazo's Misery. For this reason, it is heavily recommended to prioritize using lilies for healing if anyone needs it, even over Tetragrammaton, such that you don't ever sit on 3 lilies. This also means that if you have to move a lot, tossing lilies is a valid option to cast if you have nothing else to do, and similarly, saving a Flato's Misery for a little bit if you need to move in a moment is also beneficial. Just make sure to not spend healing lilies while the blood lily is blooming. A Flato's Misery is even more overwhelmingly powerful on AoE, so all this advice also applies for AoE, almost even more so. The best time to spend lilies are during periods where there is nothing to attack, as this means you not only get the benefit of blooming the blood lily, but it comes without the price of missing out on glare casts. So, if you won't need them, you can toss lilies between dungeon pools. At level 76, you learn the spell Aflato's Rapture, which spends a lily on use. Aflato's Rapture is effectively a free and instant version of Medica 1, and should be used instead of Aflato's Solace if at least 3 players will benefit, or if Aflato's Rapture is enough to top up all the players you intend to heal anyway. Aflato's Rapture is also easier to use for tossing lilies, as it requires no specific target. At level 78, Asylum is upgraded to also increase the healing received by players in its area. This does not really change how you use it at all, but it is a nice addition. At level 80, you learn the ability Temperance, which causes you to grow wings as well as increasing your healing magic potency significantly, while also reducing the damage everyone around you takes for the duration. Its cooldown is not that long for its powerful effect, so try to make regular use of it and get acquainted with what you can do with such power. It is worth pointing out that what is meant by healing magic potency is that only your spells are affected by this boost. Notably, Tetragrammaton, Divine Benison, Azize, and Plenary Indulgence are unaffected. At level 82, Glare and Holy are upgraded to Glare 3 and Holy 3, slightly increasing their potencies. Where did 2 go? No one knows. Deer beats Glare 3 if it lasts at least 15 seconds, but otherwise your rotation is unchanged. At level 85, all of your healing spells and their added heal over time effects, if any, have their potencies increased slightly. This does not change the way you use them, but it is worth noting that Medica 2 now heals more in total than Cure 2 on a single target. At level 86, you learn the ability Aqua Veil, which reduces the damage taken by a lot for another player, or yourself, for a little bit. The intended target is of course to place it on the tank when anticipating a tank buster, although you can use it to blunt the hit of a raid-wide AoE on any party member in a bad spot. In a dungeon context, you should consider using this just as the tank finishes pulling and comes to a stop, to soften the initial incoming damage, or use after the stuns from holy ends. At level 88, Divine Benison is upgraded to hold 2 charges, so you can use it more liberally. Just make sure to never use it back to back on the same target, as the shield does not stack with itself. Make sure to always have Divine Benison on cooldown, by placing shields on the tank to blunt the passive amounts of damage they tend to take. You can also use both charges for this, but keeping one for a big hit might be preferable. At level 90, you learn the ability Liturgy of the Bell, which places a healing blossom and grants you 5 stacks of Liturgy of the Bell. Whenever you take damage, one stack is spent to heal everyone for 400 potency. If after 20 seconds not all stacks are spent, or you use the ability again, the Healing Blossom detonates all the remaining stacks at once for half the regular healing amount. The primary use of this ability is to use it when anticipating raid-wide damage, or even better, multiple hits of raid-wide damage. You can also place the bell in advance of damage so you can easily quickly detonate it for half the potency heal, for example for big dungeon pulls. Due to this ability's unique interaction, it is definitely worth taking note of AoE attacks and fights, to get the maximum value out of it. Remember, each proper activation is equal to casting Aflato's Rapture. Keep in mind that while the healing radius of Liturgy of the Bell is wide, you may want to place it either in the center of the room or in the center of your group to make sure everyone is affected. To round off, let's first talk about an opener for boss fights, followed by more general healing tips and advice to make the most of your tools in dungeons and raids. Finally, we briefly touch on stat priorities. Let's begin. If you intend to use a Tincture, a so-called Burst Potion, use it 3 seconds before pull, and then 1.5 seconds before combat starts, start casting Glare, and then cast Deer. Then cast Glare twice, and then weave Presence of Mind, Glare again, and then weave Essays. This then leads to the general rotation. Presence of Mind and Essays should be used on cooldown. Deer should be active on all enemy targets, and you fill with Glare. If there are at least 3 targets in range, replace Glare with Holy, and if there are at least 5 targets in range, replace Deer with Holy. 
The opener is intended to ensure that presence of mind lines up with the 2 minute burst and as long as S ice is used on cooldown it will also align with this burst. The main thing white mages can do to prepare for the 2 minute burst is to use a Flatus misery during raid buffs to get even more value out of it. However, the mobility afforded by it and the healing lilies as well as the flexibility in healing may not be worth sacrificing for this burst over the course of a fight, so adjust accordingly. The 2 minute burst additionally should include a reapplication of Dia and then simply a lot of glare casts. Now for the healing tips section, let's start with dungeon pull advice. First, while the tank is pulling, just before the tank begins pulling, apply regen to them. Then, as they pull, apply Divine Benison. Then you should have time to apply Dia to as many individuals as you can manage. If the tank needs healing while pulling, use a Flats of Solace and consider reapplying Divine Benison. Additionally, if you believe you will not need Lilies to heal during the pull, you can also toss Lilies with Solace or Rapture once you have applied Dia to as many targets as you can. Do not use Holy while the tank is not finished pulling. When the pull comes to a stop, once you're about in melee range, optionally use Presence of Mind and S Eyes and then cast Holy repeatedly. The 5 first Holy casts will also stun the enemies for a combined 7 seconds, massively reducing the damage the tank will take at the start. If you can efficiently weave it somehow, applying Aqua Veil after the stun's end may be helpful to soften the damage as well. If necessary, use Dia, a Flats of Solace, or Regen to make space for more OGCD heals like Tetragrammaton, Divine Benison, S Eyes, or even Benediction. If necessary, you should not be scared of using healing spells like Cure 2 to keep the tank alive if that is what it takes. Also, remember that a Flatus Misery hits incredibly hard, especially on AoE, so using Lilies can be beneficial for your damage as well. Assorted Desperate Measures The White Mage has a few more tricks up their sleeve when things go wrong, aside from Benediction. For instance, Medica 2 heals for more on a single target than Cure 2 over its full duration. As such, if you realize that the tank is taking quite some heavy damage and you won't be able to keep up, you can use Regen, Weave Plenary Indulgence and optional Tetragrammaton or Divine Benison and then cast Medica 2 to really boost the healing. Temperance, despite being thought of as a raid-wide buff, can also be used to assist the tank in reducing the damage they take and help you heal them. Presence of Mind is mostly seen as a damage cooldown, but it also enables you to cast healing spells faster, so if this is what it takes, then that is also an option. You can also use Liturgy of the Bell preemptively so that it detonates automatically as its duration runs out, so you don't have to weave the second activation manually. For raid healing, it is a lot more complicated, and the simplest answer is to make sure to use your toolkit efficiently to deal with each mechanic. Making regular use of Divine Benison can save you from having to heal a lot of damage over the course of a fight. Assisting the tanks with tank busters by using Aqua Veil can be massively helpful. Taking note of when a lot of raid white damage is coming so you can use Liturgy of the Bell beforehand is also helpful. Beyond this, the vast majority of white mage raid healing boils down to dealing with healing after the damage has been taken. This means you should mostly be concerned with whether there is enough time for your raid to recover before the next raid white comes up, so you don't overspend resources to deal with something that Medica 2 alone would have dealt with, for example. Remember to make regular use of plenary indulgence as it is often forgotten and don't forget to use lucid dreaming a lot. I recommend using it on cooldown and you are sure to get the full value out of it if you are actively casting and below 8000 MP when it is activated. In more difficult content like Savage Raids, planning when you use which cooldowns beforehand may be particularly helpful. For example, planning when you will use your lilies may help to naturally lead you to having a Flatus Misery ready for the raid cooldowns. Finally, regarding stat priorities, take note that in nearly every single case, item level beats out optimal secondary stats. This means you should always prioritize gear with higher item level, as long as it has mind on it. After that, White Mage's stat priority is critical hit, then enough spell speed, then direct hit and finally determination. What is meant by enough spell speed is that items with critical hit and spell speed on them are all good, but if you're going to melt materia, I recommend only melting spell speed if a single materia will reduce your GCD by 0.01. .01. While direct hit does not actually boost your healing output, and determination does, the fact that healers never find direct hit on their gear naturally means that melting direct hit materia will be better for increasing your damage output, and the healing bonus determination does grant is not enough to affect your actual approach to combat at at all, you will still cast the same amount of healing spells in most situations. Finally, Piety is a stat that increases healers passive MP regeneration in combat, however it does not provide anything else. So if you don't run out of MP while using your tools like Eyes and Lucid Dreaming, then any excess Piety you have on your gear is worthless. 
As such, while piety can sometimes be necessary to meet the MP demands of an encounter, White Mage is capable of functioning without it, so you should only go out of your way to get extra piety if you know you need it. Additionally, keep in mind that spill speed directly increases the amount of MP you will use in a fight, so this can also be a factor in your decision to get piety. Unfortunately, this is a more subjective stat, and so you have to make this decision for yourself. Now, that is all for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to support me and my channel, you can like the video, leave a comment, subscribe and hit the bell to get notified when next I post a video. And if you want to give even more support than that, you can also become a member of the channel like these wonderful people here. Fun fact, in Shadowbringers and even the start of Endwalker, Aflatos Misery did three times the damage of Claire, making it literally a damage loss to actively go out of your way to produce. This meant that it was very complicated to use Lilies effectively, and furthermore, getting reasonable value out of Aflatos Misery required aligning with raid cooldowns, as Lilies charged every 30 seconds, this was also very difficult. Both of these things have since been adjusted, making it a lot easier to deal with as a whole.